That's what everybody does, right? <laughs> What's going on, guys? Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Aster. Uh, I've said that like three times in three separate videos now, but this is a, uh, if you haven't caught by the title yet, this is a response video to uh, JSpecs. Uh, if you don't know JSpecs, check him out in the description down below. Really cool guy. And I want to start this by saying uh, I want to thank JSpecs um, personally for what he did. Um, not so much for what he did in, in his video or anything like that, but for forgiving, uh, because I'm like the king of second chances. Uh, that's a lyric, by the way. If you don't know what song that's from, then boo on you. But if you do, then comment in the, in the comment section down below. Uh, but I'd really like to thank, uh, JSpecs for giving Drew a second chance. Um, Drew is one of the people that started me up in this community, uh, Little Bigness. If you don't know him, he is the, basically the ringleader, the commissioner of, uh, the UPA, the league that started off, uh, my YouTube career, and I'll never forget him for that. So, um, thank you to JSpecs for giving him a second chance, uh, because I know how great of a person that Drew can be, uh, despite his faux pas and, and his idiocy, uh, for what he did. Um, if you don't know what he did, then again, go to JSpecs' channel, find out. It's a uh, big drama, big, big, big drama, but that's not why we're here today. This is a response video to JSpecs, uh, because he basically called out everybody in the Pokemon community to, uh, and challenged them to make a video, uh, addressing the issues, uh, and how they can be solved and what we were ready to do to solve them, uh, in the Pokemon community specifically. Before I get into that, I want to start by giving you a little bit of a backstory on, I want to say gaming in general, even though I haven't been a huge, uh, avid gamer, uh, before in the past, should probably get some more water, I don't really, I can't really pause this, can I, oh, that sucks, alright, whatever, uh, <laughs> we'll just go like this, um, basically, from the age of 13 to roughly 20, 21, I played a game called Yu-Gi-Oh!, a lot of you guys know Yu-Gi-Oh, you know what it is, you've seen the anime, or you've played the card game when you were younger. I played competitively for roughly seven to eight years. And to give you some parallels between Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon, both of them are highly skillful games where you have to uh, practice and get good and know your matchups and uh, pretty much know what everything does. Uh, and know what could be hidden in the back as well. Like, if you look at a Pokemon matchup, you can almost immediately identify a Scarfer once you get good on an opponent's team. Um, just like in Yu-Gi-Oh, where you can identify what card, or potentially what card your opponent can have face down on their side of the field. So, there's a lot of similarities between Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh. And the biggest one to me is that something in, that I encountered when starting... Uh, Pokemon up. I started playing Pokemon and watching um, Pokemon YouTubers like seriously because uh, I played Pokemon since I was five years old but I started really getting into the community uh, about two to three years ago. Uh, roughly when I was about 20 years old I started watching Shady Penguin. Uh, Shady was the first big YouTuber that I watched. Uh, I was a sub just after he passed 100k subs. He's now at 400k so shout outs to that. But Basically, what I'm trying to get at is um, Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, what I discovered through having played both competitively up until now, is that there is, and this goes for a lot of things in life, by the way, guys, but there is a lot, a lot of luck involved with both games. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, basically, you open well with an opening hand, and you can just straight one turn knock out your opponent's life points in pokemon if you get some lucky crits some lucky paras some lucky burns uh some lucky anything uh living on one um there's so many things that can happen in pokemon it's, it's even worse than you yeah, i would say in terms of luck but there are so many uncontrollable factors in both games and like I said, this applies to a lot of different things. I'm sure you've been in a gaming community where a lot of things uh, come up to luck. I just started playing Rocket League. I haven't uploaded it yet, but I'm starting to get a little bit better at Rocket League. And your opponent can score off of kickoff if your finger slips. 
on the analog stick. Complete luck, nothing you can do about it. You can win the lottery, or you can not win the lottery. It's completely up to luck. So the two parallels, like I said, between the main parallel between the two is that there's a lot of luck involved. Now, why am I mentioning this? It normally wouldn't be important. This is pretty obvious. Any game that you play involves luck, right? Well, that's the thing. It should be obvious to just about anybody that you can win or lose a game completely determined on whether or not you're lucky in that game. And I see a lot of people complaining and I'm gonna I'm gonna put myself in this boat because it happens to me. Uh, I I am under this situation quite often where I find myself complaining about unfortunate events that occur in a Pokemon game. Whether you play VGC or you play on Showdown or you play League format, whatever form of Pokemon that you play, I want you to realize something. There is always going to be a game that was never in your control to begin with. No matter how well you prepped, no matter how well you played, no matter how skilled you are, or how unskilled your opponent is, there is no way the Cosmos decided for that game that you were not going to win. And people have to grasp this. It's... I wouldn't say it's annoying, but it's a little bit frustrating to see people try to break down others for having won or not even having won just getting lucky in any given game this can be pokemon this can be anything i'm tired of seeing people get angry at others for something that was never in their control to begin with you have to understand that if you're playing on the showdown ladder you are going to get hacked out quite a few times and you're going to get extremely lucky quite a few times. And what people fail to realize is that they don't see when they're the lucky ones and they get lucky breaks and important situations happen in a game where they get lucky and they get bailed out. It's harder to see that you won a game because of a crit than your opponent won a game because of a crit. Now again, where am I trying to get with this? Uh, my point in all this is, like I said before, I'm I'm tired of people trying, just just being aggressive and flat out mean to each other because of circumstances that are completely out of their control. So this is not really a call to anybody specifically, but if you're watching this video and you have ever cussed somebody out whether it be over a Discord chat or Skype, whether it be on Showdown directly, whether it be in person, doesn't matter. If you've ever cussed somebody out for getting lucky against you, uh, I want you to rethink the situation, look back on it, and not let it reproduce itself. Because nobody deserves that. I know that you think that uh, your Terrakion shouldn't have gotten crit by that Doug Trio that one time, um, and that you should have had that game, and that game was yours, and it was in the bag. And I'm not Ethan. If you're watching this, I'm not calling you out specifically. I'm just using our game as an example. But if you're in that situation and you think that that shouldn't have happened and you deserve to win, you're probably right. But at the same time. The player that deserves to win is the player who won. At the end of the day, that's that's all it is. The player who deserves to win is the player that the game decided to give the game to. It's not you. It's not your opponent. It's whoever the game decided. And you can influence it to some extent. You can try to uh, manipulate the game and... Uh, that, that's why we prep, that's why we build, that's why we focus on games, is to make sure that the odds are in our favor, but they're never completely in our control. So, the next time you think about calling somebody out on the ladder for being a lucky, insert word here, think twice. Because it's 
one i i have never met a player in my entire a pokemon player in my entire life that has not gotten a crit i've never met one so if you're watching this and you have never gotten a critical hit on a pokemon stop watching <laughs> because you've never played pokemon <laughs> so because like literally it's impossible to go through an entire game or an entire let's let's just increase the uh, the variables here. Uh, it's impossible to go through a series of 10 games without ever seeing a critical hit, whether it be to you or for you. Um, or a, para a full para. Or a burn off a scald. Or anything that I mentioned. Uh, a confusion, full confusion. Anything like that. It's impossible that you have never had it in your favor and against you. So, when you're playing against somebody and it happens for them... Just know that in their last game, more than likely, the same thing happened to them. And they probably lost. And there's no way of knowing that for sure. And somebody can go on a complete winning streak based on luck as well. Like somebody can get completely lucky every single game and just make it to the top of the ladder. It's not going to last though. Because we, we all know how this game works. Eventually, you're going to get bad luck. You can't just be lucky the entire time. It works back into YouTube as well. I'm trying to make my channel grow. And JSpecs, if you're watching this, um, we have the same goal, you and I. Uh, and that's to be part of the GBA one day. Uh, and I really admire you for having started your own league and getting everybody involved with capture cards and everything. Like, that. seriously, dude, like, good job. Congratulations on your third season. You're fantastic. You're awesome. Uh, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, then welcome. Uh, but... What was I saying? Was that, um, yeah, too, too many people do that, uh, where they're just straight out mean to people on the ladder, and I'm tired of seeing it, and if you're watching this and you do that on a regular basis, then please stop. It, you're doing everybody a favor if you just stop being that annoying person on the other end that people have to deal with when bad things come your way because there are a lot worse things in life than getting crit or getting a full para there's you gotta you gotta come back to down to earth for a second and realize pokemon is just a game man um and you shouldn't take it that seriously like still be serious about it because a lot of people are very competitive about it and that's great that's awesome i love that i'm part of a competitive community uh and i was when i was playing Yu-Gi-Oh, but Yu -Gi -Oh had that same thing when somebody would get a top deck, which is what we call when you when it's your turn and you start your turn and you draw that one key piece you need to turn a situation around that's completely out of your favor and out of your control, that's called a top deck and it's called a lucky top deck. And people would get so angry when it would happen to them. They, uh, I'm, I'm so unlucky, my opponents always get the perfect top deck and you haven't? you never have and like that's that's the big thing for me and um i was saying i was saying something about youtube um what was it come it works back into youtube come on aster you got this anyway I'll, I'll think about it later but that's that was the big thing now what do i want to do to help improve the community um all right that's the thing that's the thing i wanted to talk about was that youtube is a lot like that as well where uh, I'm trying to grow a, ch a channel, and I'm at 500 subscribers, and I worked my way there by creating a giveaway video. It got a lot of people interested in the channel. Uh, I'm not maintaining the same amount of views anymore, so I learned my lesson from that. But I still increased my sub count. I got a lot more exposure. I'm a lot more involved in the community now as a result of that. So uh, I got lucky in that sense. I put some work into it as well, and I had to make that video, and I had to market it, and a lot of people helped me out. Big shout-outs to everybody in the NBA. That's Dom, Eric, Jose, Rob, Jar, you guys know who you are, everybody, uh, thank you so much for that, but at the end of the day, Shady Penguin has 400,000 subscribers, a lot of it is his charisma and who he is as a person, uh, but a lot of it is luck, and he said it himself, he spent, I think, a, a year under 200 subscribers, and he went for supper with his girlfriend when he hit 50, like, that was a huge accomplishment for him, that was, like, big big deal so like the fact that i'm looking at my channel and it's at 500 and i'm still not satisfied 
Am I being ungrateful? Maybe. But I know where I can take this channel. But again, ultimately, it's out of my control. So I can complain as much as I want. I can be as envious as I want of other people. Uh, I can look at my channel and be like, what am I doing wrong? Is it my thumbnails? Is it my titles? Is it my commentary? What is it? Um, but at the end of the day, people are going to like you for you. Uh, and if they don't, they don't. And if your following is 200 people that like you, just remember, that's 200 people sitting in a room watching your videos daily that like you for you and like what they see on camera. And that's something I want to stress as well. Try to be yourself on camera. Because if people come to... Whoa, huge voice crack. If people come to discover that you're a completely different person off camera and that you're very detestable, you're not going to make a good name for yourself. Uh, I, can, I, I don't want to shout out or name a specific person, uh, but there is a YouTuber that I heavily looked up to as a person before, and I still find him very entertaining. But through what I've heard about him in the community and what he's said and what he's done to a lot of people, I have a different view on him now. And I'm very careful with how I approach uh, my thought on him and how I would ever approach him should I meet him. So, you know, be yourself on camera, on recordings if you're doing YouTube. Uh, and try just to be... You know what? Here, here's what I'll do for the community. I'm going to say something that I've probably never said before on camera or on recording or very rarely to, to a lot of people, but I was having this discussion with friends tonight, actually, uh, as I'm recording this. Just be nice. I know it sounds simple and it sounds redundant, but genuinely, ge genuinely, genuinely, just be nice to people. And you'll see that through being nice, I... I I have my moments, but they're extremely rare, and people know this of me. I try to be as nice as possible to everybody that I meet. Unless you do something to seriously tick me off, or you're just flat out mean to me, I'm going to be nice to you. I'm inherently nice to, to everybody that approaches me. People come to me, people that I don't know come to me, and they ask me for help prepping for their league i this has happened two or three times now and sometimes i don't have time and uh i can't really help them out it's not in my interest to to help out uh, an enormous amount of people if i was trying to, if i was helping everybody prep for their leagues i'd have a serious problem but um Daneki, if you're watching this um some people come to me and i and I speak to, to them a little bit, and I decide, you know what, I'm going to help them out. Uh, not because I want anything in return, necessarily. But if at the end of the day, I make one more person like me for me, then mission accomplished. Because my goal in life is to have as few people as possible hate me. It's... It's really a weird goal, but not necessarily that I need the whole world to like me, but I need as many people as I meet to not hate me, <laughs> basically. That's where I'm trying to go with this. Uh, and what am I doing for the community by putting out this video right now? I'm telling you guys, you will find a lot more satisfaction in genuinely being nice to people than you do in being an asshole. I'm just going to straight up say it, an asshole to people. Uh, whether that be on the ladder, whether that be in real life situations, co-workers, uh, sc like school, uh, people that you go to school with, anybody that you interact with in your daily life, if you are just nice to them, if they're mean to you after you've been nice to them, then they're the bad ones. <laughs> just don't speak to those people. Like, Let's let's take J Spex's situation into account here. 
he was put into a, sh a situation where one of his analysts invited in a, and I know this person actually, because I was in the UPA, invited in a person that is, uh, I would say, scum into his league chat, his league that he's worked very, very hard on uh, for like three seasons, I I'm guessing about a year and a half now. And he invited this person in just to have them pop out racial slurs for about 20 minutes and be horrible as a person to everybody and to get kicked out of the chat eventually. Um, like, don't be that person. Don't do things just to piss people off because nobody's going to like you. And if we can... I, I'm not necessarily saying just like eradicate all these people <laughs> that um that aren't liked uh across communities but if we can speak to them and make them realize their mistakes like let's take drew for example he's the one that invited in john and i'll say his name uh into the pmc chat uh so drew realistically is an idiot for what he did but drew knows what he did he knows what he did wrong, and we talked to him, uh, myself included, and we've told him, why can't you just be the person that we enjoy being around, uh, the leader that we like having uh, in the UPA? And Drew realized what he did, and he's going to try to be more mature uh, in the future, and he's going to try to be uh, a better leader in every chat that he's in every interaction that he has with people so like that's awesome that we were able to talk to him and he was able to realize what he had done wrong and he's fixing it and he's moving forward great we didn't need to completely abolish him from our lives we just need to make people realize that not everything that they do uh is like some things that they do are frowned upon and Sometimes you need to, like, sit them down and be like, dude, what you did, not cool. And they'll, um, I'll, I'll tell you that, like, 85% of the time, I'm probably pumping out statistics out of nowhere, but 85% of the time, they will understand, and they'll probably put an effort to correct the situation, because nobody wants to be friendless. Nobody wants to be alone in this world. Nobody wants to be hated. Nobody wants to be hated. Let me tell you, there are zero people on this, the face of this earth that enjoy having everybody look at them badly, if, if you understand what I mean. So this is what I'm doing for the community. If you encounter somebody in a Discord chat in your everyday life, and when I say community, I mean you, this, this goes for your everyday life as well. Like I said before, coworkers, people you go to school with. Uh, anybody, if you encounter somebody that is being not the best person they can be, if you care about the future of uh, that specific com community or uh, if you care about that person's future at all, take three minutes out of your time to sit them down, talk to them, and make them see what they're not necessarily doing right i would i don't want to use right because right is a very broad term like there's a, right and wrong is kind of a gray scale um but make them see what they're doing that a lot of people don't enjoy and if you're in a pokemon community if you're in a league uh, if you're just a casual showdown player if you play on wi-fi if you play vgc and somebody does something that angers a lot of different people before you jump to attack them all at once in a pact, sit them down first, talk to them, let them know that you didn't exactly agree with what they did, and they're not necessarily going to apologize right away, they're not necessarily going to change their behavior immediately, but at least they're aware of it. At least they, they see what they've done wrong, and what they've done to anger a lot of people, and maybe... It won't happen again. And maybe you'll make a friend that will end up being a huge 
asset to you in the future through that interaction. Maybe that person might end up being the most influential person in your life in the future. It's hard to tell with these things because, again, everything's based on luck. So that's what I wanted to do for the community. I wanted to uh, let you guys know how I felt about uh, approaching people and talking to people that you don't uh, exactly like what they're doing. Uh, and it's a lot of what JSpecs already said, but I wanted to, to re elaborate on it a little bit. So that's that's pretty much my part in all of this. Um, do I do I include an update in here? I don't, I don't think I'm going to include an update. That'll probably be in a separate video. Now that for some reason Camtasia started working with my C920, uh, <laughs> I was able to somehow record this video. I don't know how, but uh, the audio should be a lot better than all my other videos like this with just face cam. So that's always fun. But yeah, guys, that's going to wrap it up. Um, definitely go check out JSpecs in the uh, in the description down before. Down, <laughs> down below, it's very late. I'm sorry. Um, and this is a challenge video, of course. So I'm going to challenge anybody that's watching this, if you also want to make a video like this, and say what you're going to do to try to make the community better. Uh, whether it be just a general uh, positive message uh, across the community, if you're going to... Uh, do what I do and try to help a bunch of people prep for leaks. Uh, if you're going to, like, just that, just to give you an idea, guys, people that I have helped out, when I ask them for help, they are always there. I haven't encountered one person in the Pokemon community. Everybody's generally really nice. I haven't encountered one person yet that I have helped prep for a league that has come back to me when I've asked them for help and told me they don't have time for me. Everybody always has time and I'm I very rarely ask for help on prep I did it a lot in the beginning, but now I kind of try to do it on my own and For very very important matchups I might seek help from people that I consider very very good players and that have creative ideas uh, such as Johnny and Mens and stuff, but I very rarely uh, Go and help somebody out and they come back to me and tell me that they can't help me so if somebody asks you for help, whether it be for building a team, prepping a team, testing a game, anything, try to try to find some time for them because you might need their help in the future as well. So that's going to be my message to all of you. Uh, try just to better communicate with people and let them know when they're not doing things that uh, that people enjoy, basically. So that's it, guys. Um, if you want to make a video like this, tweet it at me. Because I want to watch all of your videos like this. Uh, I want to know what you guys think about the Pokemon community. The hashtag is in the title, of course. If you want to use that hashtag for your video as well, uh, that's awesome. But uh, you don't have to either. It's not mandatory. Uh, I just want to see your videos, what your video responses to this are. If we can get a bunch of these videos out into the community. Because I know that over the past year, a lot of hate has come down on a few YouTubers uh, for things that they do. And rather than uh, speaking to them and being, you know, being uh, ha like having calm conversations, people just automatically jump to assumptions based on what other people said, and they will immediately attack people. And just no. <laughs> like, that's my reaction to that is just no. Don't do that. Just listen to both sides of the story. You, you will never know both sides of the story properly, by the way. Just a little tidbit of information you will never know both sides of a story properly ever unless they involve you ever you will never know exactly how somebody felt in a situation uh they will never divulge that because it's very hard to um to expose exactly how you were feeling in a certain moment it's hard to remember <laughs> exactly how you were feeling so it's it's difficult to get two sides of a story almost always. So first thing is don't involve yourself in conflicts that don't concern you and don't attack people. Don't just jump on people when it's not your fight. So that's that. Uh, if you guys want to, uh, again, make a video like this, uh, let me know. Uh, either post the link to it in the uh, comment section down below. 
uh, or just hit me up on Twitter. The Twitter, my Twitter is always in the description down below. I don't say that enough anymore, but my Twitter is always in the description down below as well as my Facebook page, uh, links to other things. Everything is in the description down below. Just make sure you open up the fold and you'll see everything there. And uh, yeah, guys, if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao.